Sandra Goetze, MEP, you are the president of the Union of European Federalists and a member of the Renew Group in the European Parliament. You've called for a transformative instrument to address this pandemic. On Monday, we saw the announcement of Chancellor Merkel and President Macron. Is this the transformative instrument you've been calling for? Absolutely. 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 The right approach because, uh, first of all, it uh, seeks uh, to find uh, new resources, fresh money uh, for the European recovery, which is absolutely necessary beyond uh, what is uh, possible according to the EU budget. But uh, the second point is even more important. Uh, it, uh, it, uh, it is organized around the idea of a European uh, public debt at the service of new European yeah. uh, And this, it is a, a, a fundamental change, could be really a turning point, a game changer, uh, because if you decide to uh, uh, assume a common debt, it's because you believe uh, that you have a, a common destiny. You believe in the investment you do. You believe in the plan, uh, the recovery plan for which you are uh, assuming debt and investing. And you uh, put uh, an element of a much, uh, much more integrated Europe around the recovery plan. I think that this is, uh, from the qualitative point of view, even more than from the quantitative point of view, it is a turning point. There have been some voices already that have said that they are not necessarily supportive of this initiative. Uh, the Frugal Four, uh, Austria, Sweden, and uh, even some Eastern European countries are maybe joining their ranks. What would you say to them to persuade them that of the value of this approach? That uh, so-called frugal four and are among the biggest beneficiaries of the single market. Uh, they made a lot of money thanks to the single market. And if we do not launch a serious recovery plan with grants, with fresh money uh, to counter the recession, the divergence within the single market will be so big that the single market itself will be a stake. And the, the, the first to lose would be uh, the, the four countries which today want to oppose. And uh, I, this is a basically, uh, it is in their interest that the single market work, works in a work in a good way. You've also mentioned that Europe needs to think maybe more a bit more in global terms. You know, what is the United States doing for its economy? What is China doing for its economy? Is our approach going to be on a similar level to both those huge blocks? Well, uh, you, you have to put in, in, a, in a system which is um, more complex, like the European Union, you need to add uh, the several plans, the national plans, the European plans, what has already been decided, what could be decided. So far, we are around 4,000 billion euro of uh, European response if you add, if you add uh, the national plans to the measures already decided by the, uh, by the European Union. And this is why we must go beyond this. Uh, and this is why it is so important, the uh, recovery plan, the recovery bond, bond, the proposal of Merkel and Macron, the resolution of the European Parliament, which goes all towards the, the same direction. We are acting under extraordinary time to face an uh, um, extraordinary crisis. We need uh, extraordinary instruments and we need a new plan with new resources. This is the basic point. And if we do that, we can uh, give a response uh, uh, adequate to the scale uh, of the crisis, and that keep us uh, uh, competitive towards China and US, which on objective ground uh, are the most uh, serious uh, competitor for Europe, uh, even more uh, after the CV-19 crisis. Finally, Angela Merkel mentioned in her presentation that she would consider treaty change. We've seen an awful lot of reluctance from Europe's leaders to think about treaty change. Uh, is this the moment? I would say to uh, Angela Merkel, Handley, finally, here you are. Uh, she has always been opposed to treaty revision since the Treaty of Lisbon. Now, for those of uh, the European reality, because of her internal problem with the Federal Constitutional Court, 
uh, because of many reasons, is finally said what is obvious to us, uh, for, for, has been obvious to, for us for many years, that we also need to uh, revise the treaty. Very good, better late than never. I would have liked to hear this uh, statement by Angela Merkel uh, one hour after the speech of La Sorbonne by Emmanuel Macron uh, in September 2017, but we are still on time, we are at the beginning of the legislature. I hope that now this will follow towards and we can really also open a, a, a treaty revision process, which is absolutely necessary to give to the union the means to face the new challenges in the interest of our citizens. Sandro Gozzi, thank you very, very much indeed.